Hello everyone, a warm welcome to you all from SGT University. I am Dr. Monu Sareen from the Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences. Today, we will be discussing about barium swallow. Barium sulphate. Barium has got an atomic number of 56. And its main advantage is that it is highly radio-opaque. Radio-opaque means the thing which appears as a white on a plain X-ray. In contrast to the bowel gases, which appear as radiolucent, that is, they appear as a black on an X-ray. Barium sulphate is non-absorbable, non-toxic. It is insoluble in water and lipids. It is inert to the GI mucosa. It is used for the double contrast studies. As it coats the mucosa as a thin layer, and allows the introduction of a negative contrast. Barium studies There are various barium studies like barium swallow in which there is a delineation from oral cavity till the gastroesophageal junction. Barium meal examination This is used to study the lower esophagus, stomach and the duodenum. While barium meal follow through is done for delineation of all parts of the small bowel till the ileocecal region. Barium enteroglasis. It is a gastrointestinal technique which is designed to provide improved evaluation of small bowel. While barium enema, it is a method of imaging the entire colon after the barium is given per rectally. Barium swallow. Delineation from the oral cavity till the fundus of the stomach. First, we'll be discussing about the normal anatomy of esophagus. Anatomy of esophagus. As we all know, esophagus it is a flattened muscular tube which is 25 cm long. It begins at the lower border of cricoid cartilage, that is, at the C6 vertebral level and ends at the cardiac orifice of stomach, which is at the T11 vertebral level. Esophageal constrictions It is very important to know the esophageal constrictions and there are three constrictions. One is at the level of the cricoid cartilage, that is at the junction of esophagus with the pharynx. Second one is crossing by the iota and left main bronchus. And third one is at the diaphragmatic sphincter level. Normal indentations. Again, it is very, very important to know the normal indentations because while reporting a normal barium swallow study, we have to see what is normal and what is abnormal. In this image, as we can see, the first indentation is caused by the iota. The second indentation is caused by the left main bronchus. And the third indentation is by the left atrium. These indentations is caused by the surrounding structures on the contrast-filled barium column. Now we'll be discussing the barium swallow technique, its indications, contraindications, and the adverse effects. Indications of barium swallow. The most common indication is the dysphagia that is difficulty in swelling and odynophagia that is painful swelling. Other common indications are hiatus hernia, stricture which can be benign in cases of corrosive poisoning or it can be malignant stricture in cases of carcinoma, motility disorders like achalasia cardia or pressure or invasion from extrinsic lesions. Contraindications. In this image, as we can see, the barium is leaking from the esophageal column. So, this is a case of an esophageal perforation. It is a serious medical emergency with a very high mortality rate. And if barium is given in the perforation, it can lead to mediastinitis, empyema, and even sepsis. The other common contraindications is 
the tracheoesophageal fistula it is again a very fatal condition if not treated aggressively because if there is a fistulous communication between the trachea and the esophagus the barium can leak from the esophagus into the tracheobronchial tree which causes the pneumonitis barium swallow technique one mouthful of barium sulfate is given in the erect position and the act of deglutition is observed under fluoroscopy now the lateral film is taken in the erect position and the frontal film is taken in the supine position and after the esophagus is empty the mucosal film is taken barium swallow is an x-ray examination of the upper gastrointestinal tract it involves the swallowing of a solution containing barium sulfate which is a metallic compound which is easily visible on the x-ray images barium coats the walls of the pharynx and the esophagus and appears white on the images they can be tracked as it moves through the digestive system by performing a series of x-rays a barium swallow can help identify problems with the swallowing and diagnose abnormalities of the esophagus and stomach the indications are the barium swallow test is used to diagnose the structural and functional abnormalities of the upper git such as swallowing disorders narrowing or irritation of esophagus hiatus hernia enlarged esophageal veins ulcers tumors precancerous growth called polyps and the gastroesophageal reflux disease these are the two views which we obtain after giving the barium to the patient and in this we can see the entire esophagus is being outlined by the contrast column and we can see till the g junction the first one is the ap view and the second one is the lateral view double contrast study the barium swallow it can be single contrast or it can be double contrast single contrast refers to imaging with the barium or any water soluble contrast medium while the double contrast means the use of barium and air which can be produced by any effervescent material like eno now in this image as we can see the upper arrow it depicts the image which is produced by the double contrast study and the two indentations as we have already discussed are by the iota and the left main bronchus and the below arrow it depicts the contrast column which is completely filling the lumen of the esophagus adverse effects of barium as we can know that aspiration of barium into the respiratory tract it leads to pneumonitis and this may happen in cases of stricture esophagus or carcinoma esophagus and this condition is very very serious as it can lead to even death of the patient if not treated properly and gastrographin is given in such patients as it is water soluble now we'll be discussing some common esophageal pathologies which we can diagnose on barium swallow achalasia cardia in this condition clinically the patient has dysphagia for both the solids as and liquids as compared to the carcinoma in which there is a progressive dysphagia in achalasia there is impaired relaxation of lower esophageal sphincter resulting in marked dilatation of the esophagus with classical bird beaking sign at the gastroesophageal junction and there is a pencil tip narrowing and this bird beak sign as you can see in this image it is a diagrammatic representation the bird beak sign it refers to the tapering of the inferior esophagus and the dilated esophagus is seen proximal to the segment esophageal stricture esophageal strictures it can be benign or it can be malignant the malignant esophageal stricture in which there is a long irregular stricture of the esophagus with mass like shouldering 
at the proximal extent of suture with dilated proximal esophagus and this is a shouldering side and the long stenotic segment give rise to rat tail appearance while in cases of benign esophageal suture there is a smooth long narrowing hiatus hernia herniation of abdominal contents through the esophageal hiatus of the diaphragm into the thoracic cavity in this picture as we can see the g junction has gone above the diaphragm so this is a case of a sliding hiatus hernia and we know that hiatus hernia is of the three types the sliding the rolling and the mixed type and the most commonest is the sliding hiatus hernia which is seen in 90% of the cases esophageal varices it refers to the dilated submucosal veins of the esophagus in the barium swallow study as we can see there are multiple longitudinal esophageal filling defects and this is the typical appearance of a varices zenkers diverticulum it is also known as pharyngeal pouch in this there is a posterior out pouching of the hypopharynx proximal to the upper esophageal sphincter through a weakness in the muscle layer called the chilean dehiscence take home points as we have already discussed the barium swallow it is a specialized x-ray investigation which is simple cost effective and non invasive technique for evaluation of upper gid barium swallow is the gold standard investigation for esophageal motility disorders and above all precaution must be taken to prevent the aspiration as it can be fatal and even after the advent of mbct and mri the barium it plays a very important role so today we covered the barium swallow in our next class we'll be learning the musculoskeletal radiology till then keep learning keep growing see you next time